Hey everyone, I really could not be more excited about the video today. When I'm thinking up ideas to share on YouTube on this channel, I'm always trying to place myself in that position of what would I have enjoyed seeing when I was kind of getting started. Uh, I mean, heck, I, I even look for videos now uh, that can kind of help me along my journey uh, in this creative realm of photo and video. And so today I'm, I'm super excited. I've got the head of creative media from the University of South Carolina that is gonna be over here. And he has his fingers in just about anything that the athletic department puts out as far as videos, photos, creative strategy, all that kind of good stuff. So he's gonna be here to sit down and run through some questions and I could not be more excited. So we'll get to it right after this. And I didn't make a big deal out of this this week, but the, it's, it's not lost on me. All right, raise your hand if you were here two years ago. So there's a lot of guys. I didn't talk about it, but I remember literally during that game was when it was announced I was going to be your head coach. But for you guys, man, to go from that moment to... Ah. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Y'all look good. Y'all look good. It's action time, man. All right, it is action time. Listen, you're about to go on the, the bright lights of William Bryce Stadium, every stadium that you're going to play in. Everybody's buying tickets. You're going to have 80,000 buying tickets. And I'm going to tell you something, they're coming to see you. All right, everybody in here are stars of the show. Everybody has a role. All right, we're all stars. I know what y'all have been waiting for a minute now. Uh, we have been waiting for a minute now. Uh, this is a program built on love. Togetherness, teamwork, working together, we win together, we lose together. And may no man leave with any doubt about what's about to happen. We've been waiting a long, 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 long time for this right here, okay? You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. Wait for your brother, man. Wait for your brother. We know what to do. We prepare. It is all about us. You know why? Because this is a culture built on love, man. A culture all about brotherhood. Above all else, love your brother. Fight for your brother. Challenge him for your brother. Not everybody. Not Or nothing. Or nothing. Throw back down. When are we going to come on the road and get one of these times? Why not tonight, man? That's what it comes down to. A deep belief in the man standing next to you. moment two years ago to where we are right now as well man i'm so freaking proud of you i'm honored to be your head coach and thank you for believing in the culture <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel today. I'm super excited. I've got Justin King here who pretty much has his hand in anything that goes out creatively with the University of South Carolina Gamecocks Athletic Department. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that's probably about right. Okay, so uh, he's, uh, he's here taking time out of his busy schedule uh, to answer a couple of questions uh, that I have that I feel like y'all might be interested in. And then after we finish the segment here, we'll kind of move over to Patreon and do some direct questions that some folks have answered over there. So let's just get this rolling, Justin. Thanks for, for coming over here and being here. And for those who might not be familiar with what you do, if you can just, 
I mean, give us a brief description of your job with the Gamecocks. Uh, first of all, appreciate you having me, my friend. So my job varies a lot day to day. Uh, there are days when I'm out shooting, there's days when I'm editing, there's days when my focus is leading the team. But essentially, I lead the creative team at the University of South Carolina. We do everything from recruiting visits, to recruiting focused social content, to fan focused social content, to creating content that plays in venue. So it, it varies a lot. There's no one day is like the next. <laughs> So it's, it's kind of a big plate that stays constantly full of mm -hmm. stuff to do. So mm -hmm. I think, too, some people might find it interesting. So I'll ask you, like, how did you end up doing what you're doing right now? Uh, because it's not your typical submit job application type uh, path that most people would picture when they're kind of climbing the ladder to do, uh, you know, something in any kind of business, not necessarily just creative. But uh, your way was... You know, almost similar, I guess, to how I've ended up doing some of the stuff I'm doing. And uh, just, you know, if you want to share just some of that, because I do think people would find that interesting and, um, you know, give them maybe some inspiration for how to approach universities, companies, agencies, in order to try to get work in this kind of creative field. Well, it's, it's fun because, um, I mean, it started in 2000 and. 10 and you were I mean very much there for it. I mean we've been working together since yeah. 2011 that first video so yeah. like going on wow that's a long time now that I think about it that happened fast <laughs> that, was, that was a long long time uh, basically I got my start by I knew I loved South Carolina football I knew I loved sports I knew I loved to create videos specifically at that point in time uh, and I knew I loved storytelling and so I just started to make videos for fun about South Carolina football and I'll always say I'm eternally thankful on that when I started to make videos and just I just post them on YouTube put them on football message boards when I started to do that was at the same time that South Carolina football got really good it was 2010 was the first year so 10 11 12 13 were the primary years I was doing that and 10 11 12 13 were the primary years where we were really right, good right so always thankful to guys like Connor Shaw and Marcus Lattimore and all the players who really helped kind of build that but I started putting stuff out there and people seemed to like it. I, I remember my first video, I remember posting it on Cocky Talk, which doesn't even exist anymore, a South Carolina <laughs> message board, and seeing that it got 500 views and I, I remember thinking to myself, like, that's not like my mom hitting refresh, like people are actually watching right, this, right. Like, and I was, that was cool. It's kind of scary in a way. You know, it was really scary at the time too, I was like, oh my gosh, and then he started getting messages, like, we want more, we want more, and that never stopped, here we are, you know, that's, that's, right, that's right. never slowed down. But essentially I, I did that and was doing that for a lot of fun. Uh, on my own as a hobby and I just kept learning from that I became a better editor uh, I learned how to distribute things on social media I learned you know social media is, is effectively just a distribution platform the same as broadcast and that mindset yeah um, and just kind of continued down that path while working you know I was working full-time jobs for a while I was in marketing and I was in social media then the two kind of started to converge and before I knew it I was um, in Birmingham, Alabama, working for Alabama Media Group, covering Alabama and Auburn. Um, I had started to shoot then, which was, it had been helpful that I'd been editing for years, so I knew the look I wanted to was shooting. Right, so, so you moved from kind of post to the camera, not the camera to post, which mm -hmm. is it's kind of cool, because it, it just shows that you can, you know, it's, I guess, what do you call that, bilateral or something? Yeah, you can go a, one way or the other. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, it used to be a thing, too, where I used to go, I used to, uh, when I was, first job out of college was technically with ESPN, which which came, I say technically, because tech, like really, my first job after I graduated was as a lifeguard you know, for like a couple months. Right. That's a little bit of a sh <laughs> like, little well, we, secret We there. all had those. Yeah, I was, I was just searching for something at that point in time. But uh, you know, that first video I ever made actually ended up getting me a job at ESPN. Uh, a good buddy of mine said, you should send it to a recruiter there. And I was like, they're not gonna respond. And then they did. And, yeah. and, and I mean, that was a, a very low on the totem pole job. But, um, but it was a great you know door opener, a great learning experience for me. But I'd work there in their editing systems and their style, and then I'd leave and go home and work in Adobe Premiere and do things as like this hobby. And so I kind of started to get trained in both ways, and that was really beneficial. And learning the skill set. Exactly. As, you know, I guess and that was your kind of inner passion, as, as you might not even known, was driving you to, kind of down this path. And then, but then the university, some of the officials, you know, the guys, decision makers, actually recognized some of your work and brought you in to do like a video we did, because mm -hmm. you weren't employed at the university mm -hmm. then. So we did a baseball intro mm. uh, segment, which is, that was that right after the second title? Mm-hmm, yep, it was so the, the 2011, 12, 12, 12. Okay, yeah, so it was 2012. So for those of y'all that don't know, the baseball team here won back-to-back -back national titles. So the intro video for that following season was you know, kind of a big deal, I guess, because mm -hmm. uh, there's just a lot of hype around the team and 
a lot of attention there. And so they brought you in and we worked together because you used some of my still photos to create mm-hmm, a, a lot. video, uh, mm-hmm. which was pretty cool. So, and that kind of brings me into like, what would you say are the like aspects of, you know, your job? Like what kind of skill sets and video, fo- you know, photo post-processing uh, do you need to know to accomplish uh, the work that you and your team do? I can break this down like in a couple of kind of ways. So um, from a video standpoint, you know, you're working in sports, so it's really, really helpful to have an appreciation for sports. You right, know, um, right. what personally, what I love about sports is that there's a platform where people immediately care about what you're making, and, and that's really valuable. And the stories in sports are just, in my opinion, bo- almost unmatched. I mean, even when you get Hollywood films, that's still acting. In sports, right. it's real, yeah. and I love that. I, I absolutely love that. That is what makes it so special, is that joy so and that passion is real. Documentary, documentaryism, I guess, in a way. To a certain extent, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, what's funny is it's changed over time. So I've been here, I've been at South Carolina since 2017 now, so it's been a couple of years. And over the years, I've just watched it change what we need to do. You know, there was times when we need to generate hype. And realistically, since Coach Beamer has been here, it is as much about documenting what's actually happening as anything. It used to be a thing where we came up with every idea. We don't anymore. We had a very popular video over the summer of a hide and, hide and seek where the team did a hide and seek thing. That was a lot of fun. And that wasn't our idea. That was the team's idea. That was Derek right. Moore's idea. That was Luke Day's idea. And then they came and said, hey, we want to do this. And then we figured out how we we're going to shoot it. But from a skill set standpoint, obviously you need to be able to shoot. You need to be able to edit typically in Adobe Premiere, you know, but you have to have an understanding of editing, nonlinear editing, what it means, what it is. Uh, and what's neat now is, is when I first started, yeah, to get Premiere, Photoshop, you had to pay a couple grand. You know, the, the, uh, to be honest with you, the entry right. point wasn't very easy. It, it was not, it, there was a barrier there from a cost standpoint. Uh, what, before well, I was able to get cameras it. cameras too, you know, cameras too. and cameras, yeah. yeah. Cameras too, so uh, all that stuff. And, and yeah, I remember burying myself in, in computer labs underground for, for hours and hours and hours because that was the only way I could get access to computers and the software and stuff like that. Um, now, fortunately, and what is awesome is that those tools are significantly more available. If you're a student, the full Adobe Creative Suite, Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, $20 a month subscription. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, now it's something. Even the computers, though, that you need to run it on, they're significantly more available than they used to be. It used to be the big giant MacBook, you know, right, the, tra- right. or the trash can for a little while there, the trash can MacBook. A hand heater. Exactly. And, and, <laughs> and, and that's not the case anymore. And so the ability, even learning, you used to have to pick up a book and try and figure it out or have to have somebody teach you. Now there's a, there's a tutorial on YouTube for everything. Right, right. I always tell people the more, most important skill set, a really good skill set, know how to Google. Know how to Google, know how to learn. You're not going to know, like, oh, that thing in that video is cool. You don't know what it's called to Google it, so you kind of go down a rabbit hole of this happened, so it's called this, so it's called this, and figure out what to type into Google, and right. you can learn it. Right. Well, and then sometimes you can actually find the who created the video and find them on social media, shoot them a direct message, and most, you know, I would say most times mm-hmm. these days, people are happy to share just uh, in... The guys at the top level, and I've, I've mentioned this on the on the channel here too, is that I mean I think we're all trying to move to the next next thing, and so sharing something that we're actively doing, it's you know in the old days I think the mentality was to kind of close it off and it's a top secret and that type of thing, and and that's something I totally do not subscribe to, obviously, mm-hmm. and uh, and so I think those that are progressing aren't worried about you know sharing because they're kind of moving along and enjoy helping. You know, people, because that's there's a joy in that as well as creating something unique and then kind of sharing that with you know a group of people that have a need or are really you know hyped about using a technique that you might come up with that mm-hmm. type of thing. So yeah, if you really want to see if you know something, teach it. Yeah, you know that's that's when you know, and then the ins and outs, and it pushes you as a creator to continue to move forward. You know, if you figure out something out that you're good with, I mean, that's great. But if you just keep focusing on that and you turn around and it's three years later and you haven't evolved at all, that's that's a problem. You're setting yourself back. And so by being willing to teach and guide others, and here's how I did this, you effectively are going to be on to the, on force yourself to move to the next thing and force yourself to grow in a way. Because we're all creatures. We all have comfort, right? We get yeah. something good at something, we'll just stick with that whole thing. Yeah. When you continue to evolve in it and do that by teaching others, you find yourself in a pretty good position. No, I think that's, I mean, that's a huge point out there. And then I kind of want to turn it too to, to yeah, I know when, like in sports, because we're talking about sports and you do a lot in sports, there's teamwork on the field. Mm-hmm. But like with everything you do, 
you have to have teamwork off the field to accomplish your goals. And so teamwork brings in talent. Uh, it's the, kind of that crossroads of talent with the camera, with post-processing, but also talent and personality to get along with everyone else on the team to kind of get these, you know, especially these expansive video uh, pieces together where they're going to be multiple guys working on something and then how important it is for, you know, those guys to get together, you know, you know personality-wise. And, like, I guess at the end of the day, and we talked about this a little bit before off-camera, you know, would you hire a guy with A-plus uh, skills with the camera and stuff like that, but then, you know, maybe an F personality and, and someone that wasn't easy to work with, or would you kind of, you know, meet in the middle somewhere there? Just, I mean, if you want to speak on the importance of not just bringing your skill set as a photographer, videographer, but also, you know, kind of lowering your ego a little bit to work with others and, and that type of thing. You just said the magic word, like ego. Like, I, like one of the things I like to probably pre shout from the mountaintops at my team is that, like, ego is the enemy. Ego makes you not want to teach others how to do what you do because you're scared that they might get better than you. Right. Ego results in teams closing up and getting tight and getting nervous and, and, and it's the enemy of everything. It's the enemy of creativity. If you make a decision and you think back on it and it's based on ego, because you know, whether it's feelings or ego, like it's pretty much always going to be the wrong choice. So you gotta think about that regularly. And my interview process for the jobs in South Carolina, I mean I've had a lot of people um, been fortunate to work with just unbelievably talented people over the years in South Carolina and, and a lot of whom like I, I love to know when they come in what they want to achieve and one of the greatest feelings ever is, is helping people along that way doing whatever part I can sometimes it's just to get out of the way right and let them be right. great like there's frequently with people and that's where you have to check your ego as I well, do right? yeah, yeah I do yeah. when yeah. they want to do things the, their way yeah yeah and that's I mean because I'm sure some of those pieces and I've seen you give credit to someone when they've obviously put their stamp on a piece that's gone out and gotten, and it doesn't necessarily have to get a bunch of attention, but you recognize it as something special. And you do take time out to give a shout out to you know the crew that was involved in that video, which I think speaks highly for you know, so anyone that might want to work in your crew, that you, know, you are kind of that leader that will acknowledge people for doing a good job. So that's, um, I think that's important to show from the top all the way down to you know an intern level probably, mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of brings us also kind of segue into you know the million dollar question that I get asked a bunch, and I'm sure you get asked a bunch is like how does someone get into you know the, your line of work? How would someone uh, get an opportunity to work like on your team or and and I don't want to make this specific to your team, but I know you're you know. Yeah, I guess people in your position all over the SEC conference and all over the country, uh, these bigger uh, colleges. But you know, what is it that someone can do to get the opportunity to work in college athletics on your team? I'm gonna adjust my seat because I'm sinking here. No. <laughs> the, the, oh, I gotta sit up straighter here. The, the offensive line came up here and sat <laughs> in my chairs and wrecked these uh, uh, things on here. So. Um, I'm gonna answer this based on almost based on like age groups is really kind of the best way. So if you're in high school, okay, you're someone young, like you know you enjoy this. Um, the biggest thing you can do is just start to create. So you can find a way to get Adobe Premiere, find a way to get a computer that can run it. You know that's gonna be an important thing. I highly recommend Adobe Premiere because of the you know working with Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop. There's obviously Final Cut. It's fine. You're still learning nonlinear editing. That's good. Right. But if you can. Get your hands well, on it. All together, system. like in that subscription. Not, not that we're sponsored by Adobe, no, by any means, no. but but it's an they easy way to. to get everything in and to a you know yeah exactly. If it's an easy way to get everything you need in one little package, and then you can kind of splice it from there. Um, from there, you just start to create. Right, everybody's got phones where you can shoot video, but even more than that. Download videos off YouTube. It doesn't mean it doesn't. You don't have to make stuff that immediately goes out. I mean, that's a big that's a big piece of it too. So just start downloading stuff and just start making stuff. So that I mean, that's again, that's if you're young and in high school, get involved with your local with with your team. See if your high schools um, if they have any sort of a broadcast department with any sort of cameras. Most high schools will have something like that, and just start shooting some stuff. Just start creating. Don't worry about if it's good. Don't worry about what other people say. Just learn the process of oh shoot, I shot on these settings and it was overexposed or this was underexposed or I didn't get audio. Video, or my photos are blurry. Why? Oh, that's what shutter speed does. Right. And you learn through those ways. Just start doing that. And all we ask for when we look for like interns is some level of experience. Because the problem is what a lot of people will do is they'll say, oh, I love what you guys do, so I want to do it too. And then we bring them in. And then once they see the process, they're like, oh, 
That's way more work than I thought it was. Um, so that's again, yeah, that's 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 young. So if you're somebody who's already in there, if you're somebody who really enjoys this, and say you're whether it's in college or graduated, and and you still just want to get into it, it's kind of similar where you start to create and find ways to kind of go out and shoot stuff. Go out and take portraits of your friends. Go take photos, do videos of that kind of stuff. Just start creating and don't worry about getting out on social media and getting popular or finding ways like getting the best demo reel within six months. Like don't worry about right. that because you can have the best demo reel ever. But if you don't have a fundamental understanding of why, the why behind the creative, like if you shoot enough, eventually you're gonna get some good shots. Like, really. Right. But it's like, can you consistently do that? And and that'll be found out very quick, you know, as you're um, working in this field. You have to know these cameras and these settings back and forth, like the back of your hand. You have to understand frame rates and shutters and resolutions and all that kind of stuff. And it can be very overwhelming. The only real way to make it not is by doing it and learning little by little, piece by piece. Um, I mean, I equate it to playing a musical instrument. You can't just pick it up and play it. You gotta practice and it's gonna be, it's gonna feel weird on your hands and your, you know, all that right. kind of stuff. And it, it, eventually you'll kind of get there. But, but when they get on your staff or some other staff at, at a university, I mean, you're, you're gonna be dependent upon, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you're gonna get that access that you have to deliver something that is gonna benefit the team and that's where you get to a point to where that pressure, you don't even feel that pressure because you're, you're, you're used to doing that, that yeah. type of thing. You, you, so. have, you have things you lean back on. It gets to the point where you know the technical side of it so well that you go in and you're just worrying about the story side of it. And then you go in, it gets so to the point where when you go in with an idea for a story, you've done it enough where something crazy happens, which on any sort of sports shoot, whether it's in a game or outside of a game, whatever it is, it's always going to vary from what you think it's going to be. Right. Like it will always change. Um, and when that happens, you're adaptable because you are you know that it'll work out right because you've done it enough. You've done this enough times to kind of do that. So really, if you want to be in this field, you just need to kind of start. You need to just start creating and start editing and start putting stuff out there. And then when you feel like you're in a good place, it's okay to put stuff out there for feedback. Don't look for the, oh my gosh, you're so awesome type of feedback. That can't be your why. If that's your why, you might, even if you make it in the industry, you'll be in it for a year, maybe two, and then it'll burn you out. Um, that can't be your why, but it, it is a good way to kind of get some feedback. Hey, how can I get better? Connect with people on social media is a great way to kind of do it. Right. I mean, it's a distribution platform. It's a powerful way. Um, and then the number one thing is learn, number one, number one, number one, number one, far and away is learn to be a good teammate. You know, you touched on that a little bit about what it yeah, means. Yeah. I, if I had a, I mean, I've got a, a great team of people. I've had people come through, uh, you know, we have a wall in our office, like the uh, gone but not forgotten wall of all the people who have kind of come through South Carolina uh, over time. Um, most of which, pretty much all of which, yeah, I still keep in contact with because they're, I consider them, now that I'm not their boss, I can be their friend. Uh, right. That's one of those right, things. Right, right. But um, everybody's made their mark in that way, but they've all been good teammates. My interview process is probably the weirdest one ever. Like, I'm, it's varied from person to person, but I'll say this, like, by the time I bring somebody in for an interview, like, I mean, you can see what they're good at. You can see their skill sets. You know, you talk to people around the industry. My first question is, are they a good teammate to, like, their, their references? It's not, do they know resolutions, do they know that stuff? Because let's get this straight. My, whether it's me or somebody else, like we can teach, my team can teach people to push buttons any day. This button does this, this button does that. Right, you right. can't teach heart, you can't teach talent, and you can't teach somebody to be a good teammate. I cannot emphasize that enough. To care and want the success of the others around you and then watch as the whole team moves forward in a positive way because you genuinely care that the people who you work with have success too rather than, oh man, that, that was pretty good what they made, I can make something better or being jealous or that kind of right, stuff like that. Or right. you know, knowing you have a really great shot and it would make their video better but you're like, no, nah, that's my shot, I wanna keep that. Well, no. That's, and that's where like, uh, you know, the team that you're working for, obviously the game guys, when they went on the field, I feel like with y'all, it's almost important to win off the field, like after that win. It's probably more, you know, satisfying to you know get that creative piece out there to kind of push that win forward. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, y'all can sit back as, as a crew and slap high fives and 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 just really be excited about what everyone has brought to the table mm -hmm. to to you know create that piece. Yeah. Um, Everybody's got different skill sets, whether it's on a game day, regardless of the sport. Everybody is doing different things in different ways. Um, you know, I've got people like like Ethan Still on my team who we joke right. He's the Ronin Whisper. He's just incredible with that. I don't understand how he'll 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 get these amazing shots with it, and it's just you know things like that. And then people who are really great at game action, people who are better on the sideline because they're just more energetic and they get around faster. Right. Yeah, people who are better at editing. It's it's all the skill set varies. And as a leader, my job and is is to make sure that when I 
bring people in, I learn what their skills are, I learn what they like to do, and then I put them in situations where they can maximize that. It's not for me to mold them into what I want them to be. Well, so how would you say would be the best way to kind of approach you? I know like, you know, your staffs, you get them set and then you do, like you said, you've got the gone but not forgotten. And so there are holes there that you have to fill. And I know that you probably have, you know, people that send in stuff all the time. I just didn't know if there was a best way that uh, people would know to like send in their reels or their portfolios or that type of thing to get kind of on your radar for when those spots open. And this goes not just for Justin here, but for you know any other you know schools and stuff. Because I know you know people watching this are gonna be all over the country. So you know you would want to kind of focus probably something more local, at least maybe to start, unless you you know re willing to uproot and move somewhere and that type of thing. But keeping it simple, just kind of what is a you know where be found as effective ways for people to. Uh, you know, get their work in front of you, that type of thing. Um, I mean, the best way is to put work out there where you get noticed and somebody like, I mean, there's plenty of people where I'll send them a message. I'm like, hey, that was really cool. Like just touch and base, just let me know. Like, let just me know when you make your next thing. Like, thing. I mean, yeah, like just do that and let, and let that kind of stuff like shine. It's always good, you know, you can message people, but I'll say this, if I get a message from somebody who uh, is at a current their, their current place and I look and they started there three months ago and then they're already looking for the next thing, that's kind of like, I'm like, like you know, that would, yeah. be a, that'd be a red flag. It's a little bit of a red flag. It is, you know, because you, when you hire somebody, you know, if this industry is one where people are going to come and go probably more rapidly than most, um, especially with a younger demographic who's more willing and able to move around the country. Um, but you know, if someone comes in for three, four months, by the time you get them up to speed, they're they're gone again. Right. And a real value is having somebody there for an extended period of time. Where when you get that request to make a historic thing, they know the history of that place a little bit better. You know, and it's not always required. You know, people come and. But um, I mean, that's th there's not as long as you're putting your work out there, you know, it'll 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 get noticed, and that's a, that's a great debate I always see is there's a difference between putting your work out there and saying, hey, I made this, this is something that I'm proud of, versus being like, look at how amazing I am, and believe me, that's noticed like right away right. what your attitude you have with that whole thing. So it's getting it out there, but it's also the approach of how you put it out there that people are going to notice. Maybe the caption, even the way you you title it, and and that can give a glimpse of your personality and how. You know, because y'all are always, you know, it, everything comes across that way, and in, in some negatives, and then some positives and stuff like that. So, I mean, that that's something I've learned right here. Just, uh, you know, for people watching this that, that want to get into this, is just, you know, I, like you said, put it out there to be seen, but do it in a way where it's not like, hey, look at me type of thing. You just get it out there, and if people see it and retweet it naturally, and then you get some growth like that, and then follows, and then you you pick up the Justin Kings of the world, and then the other. Uh, guys that are head of media teams at other schools and then you know because y'all do announce when openings come up and stuff mm -hmm. like that and other schools mm -hmm. do the same thing and then they're also uh, collaborative type accounts online that will you know that's one of their things that they put out their content they put out is when uh, opening opens up at different schools around or not just schools but pro teams and all different sports and so I would search out some of those uh, accounts and then prepare yourself for that. And then hopefully when those openings come up, then when you do maybe shoot a DM to somebody and they've already seen your work and they might even be following you, which actually makes it easier to DM. Yeah, definitely. So. I mean, it's one of those things where, um, I mean, who you know matters. And you know, you, but a lot of this industry, you can meet people just online, just on social media. And it's almost like you know that person. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask somebody, hey, do you have time for a 15 minute call where I can pick your brain about stuff? I have that happen all the time and I'm uh, that, that's a, you know, sometimes time it's it's hard with time, but right. that that's truly a great feeling. And if there's somewhere you want to work and you reach out to somebody and um, and and you know you don't hear back right away, I would always say reach out. You know, two or three times, give it some time because there's times when it gets busy, things get lost. I've probably done that, but if you reach out to somewhere and say, hey, you know, I'm just can I get a little bit of information? Can I just pick your brains with some questions about that I have? And that person is like, no. And that's a team leader right there. That's probably not somebody you want to work for anyway. If you right. think about it that way. Yeah. So that can go both ways. It, yeah, it absolutely can. Like you remember, you are interviewing the place that you're working at too. And and in this industry, there's places where work life balance can be you know pretty good. Uh, for the most part, there's places where it can be horrific. And and you can go into this thing and think that the entire industry is like that. And before you know what you want out, when you don't even really know what the industry is. I mean, it happens. Yeah. It can happen fast. But yeah, um, it's obviously it is who you know. But also think about it's also why they know you. Um, you know, do they know you because you post ridiculous, controversial things for for uh, likes and attention on social media, and you're you know trying to be a, a member of the media when you do it in ways that aren't necessarily what would be considered ethical? You know, you could say it like that. Right. Um, and oh, you might create videos, and then you know you go to apply for a position in in house. Like the chances are, like 
they were already, you already be on like a blacklist. Yeah, in a way just, and, just, and, I mean, you right. more problem, more trouble than it's worth. Because there's no shortage of people who want to work in this industry. It's a very cool industry. So that and that is a challenging thing. I mean, I will say this though. I think it's also very important. Something over the years that I've been on with is, um, if I put a job out there, um, an opening, there's uh, and I get 50 applicants, 48 of them are males. I think it's really important that we have more females in this industry working in this thing. I think it's yeah. more important that more females are out there putting their work out there and getting noticed and things like that because it's, it's just from a just from a mindset standpoint, having different points of view. Like I, the structure of my team, it's important that we, obviously I'll hire a lot of my students who become, who are really good and you know, again, bring up Ethan again. He's the one who was, he started off as a student. Um, but then having a few who come from other places with other mindsets is really beneficial to overall creativity. Right, well, because then you can get kind of in that bubble where you're not, you know, exposing yourself to other stuff and then that's where I guess an influx of people that come in with different viewpoints and stuff like that. and can freshen things up and kind of expand that bubble or, or pop that bubble completely, which is important because, uh, you know, you can't grow as a creator with, you know, just like everything being kind of so self-contained in, in, in that type of a way. But, all right, let's jump to, I guess, one last question here. And that I would just throwing this out there, you know, what would be something that people might not expect about, you know, working like in your job uh, or in college athletics? I mean, what what is something out there that, you know, it might be a little bit off the radar. Um, <laughs> the challenge of balance when you work for a university is the first thing that comes to mind. And by balance, I mean both work life, um, but also with, with, with their various sports. There's some positions that might work with a very specific team and you're on that team and that's, and that's great. But um, there's also a lot of benefits as a creator to be able to work with a lot of teams and stretch your creativity. There's certain things you can do with basketball that you can't do with football or right. soccer that you can't do, you know, that kind of situation. But making sure that everybody feels like they're getting your best when, you know, there's going to be days when your best is a 10 and there's going to be a days when your best is a six, and, uh, you know, just because for whatever reason, maybe you just got, maybe you work 12 hours a day before and you're tired, but m making sure that everybody feels that, that, that you're doing your best with that balance, that can be a really big challenge because, you know, there's a, uh, you know, that ego, the ego is the same thing. I mean, it's rampant and we're, we work in sports, you know, people, yeah. people, a lot of times the attitude is that every single individual is the best ever. And that's a wonderful attitude to have in sports. You should have that to a belief to a certain extent. But when you feel like, well, I'm not getting this, what I should get, that gets really challenging to navigate as a leader. And even just as an individual creative, that's something that you might not, uh, might not expect, but uh, challenges exist for a reason, and when we figure that out, like when we figure out how to make that bounce perfect and get that thing structured, you're going to be uh, you be able to feel pretty accomplished. Well, that's great. Well, thanks, Justin. I appreciate you coming in here and talking talking to us. As I mentioned, we're going to do a couple more questions that were directed from some members on Patreon. If you're interested in that, join us over there. Uh, if not, if you feel like this video is worthy, hit that thumbs up, subscribe for more content just like this, and I will see y'all. And the next one, let me know too in the comments if you like this type of format and there are not many of these guys around here locally, but maybe I can figure out some way to do uh, you know, this type of a format with someone else in the industry and uh, put something together like this if y'all do find this uh, interesting. So see y'all in the next one.